फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक गॉल बेडर स्टोन्स खोले लिथियासिस सो वेन एवर पेशेंट कम्स टू युअर क्लिनिक विथ अ जॉइंडिस यू हैव टू थिंक इन थ्री टर्म्स इज इट अ प्री हेपैटिक जॉइंडिस हेपैटिक जॉइंडिस और अ पोस्ट हेपैटिक जॉइंडिस प्री हेपैटिक जॉइंडिस मेनली हैव टू थिंक अबाउट हिमोलिटिक डिसऑर्डर्स हिमोलिटिक एनीमिया कैन मैनिफेस्ट विथ अ जॉइंडिस हेपैटिक मेनली हैव टू थिंक अबाउट लिवर सेल डिसऑर्डर्स मेनली हेपैटाइटिस or sometimes even hepatocellular carcinomas can manifest with the jaundice the most important is again post hepatic where it could be due to the gall stones so gall stones can cause obstruction anywhere in the biliary artery and that can cause the obstructive jaundice so they are post hepatic causes sometimes really post hepatic cause can be due to the pancreatic uh, tumors tumors of the head of the pancreas are uh, rarely duodenal adenocarcinomas at the this ampulla of waiter where uh, you know the <coughs> the ducts will open into the second part of the duodenum that can also cause the obstructive jaundice so most important and very very common disease is the cholelithiasis so let us have a look how the gallbladder stones are formed what is the pathogenesis of the cholelithiasis so we will have the three important topics that comes under this particular topic cholelithiasis which can induce cholecystitis rarely very rarely even carcinoma of the gall bladder can occur due to these stones gall bladder stones they constitute around 10 to 20% of the adult population will be get affected with the gall stone so don't think it is rare it is very very common if at all you store these stones you can get around 25 to 50 tons of uh, gall stones if at all you store at one place so that indicates that there is a high burden of these uh, gall bladder stones nearly 1 million cases are reported every year uh, as a new cases but problem is 80% of these uh, cases remain silent so remaining 20% patient will come with the various signs and symptoms of the gall bladder stones classification of gall bladder stones mainly two things pure stains which are mainly made up of uh, cholesterol sometimes it could be a pigment pigmented gall bladder stones especially the bilirubin pigments the pigment whenever we use the word pigmented gall bladder stones think about hemolytic anemias so pigmented gall bladder stones in a 8 year old boy or a 10 year old boy or a girl so always think about hemolytic anemias causing the cholelithiasis mainly hereditary uh, spirocytosis sickle cell anemias sometimes really thalassemias so think about those hemolytic anemias as the cause for the young population usually gall bladder stones are the uh, very common in the reproductive span uh, around 40 years or 50 years especially in obese female but whenever child will come with the gall stones especially if they are pigmented gall stones think always about the hemolytic anemias and we have mixed stones remember don't con- get it confused for the kidney stones so whenever we ask in the exams student will confuse gall stones and kidney stones renal stones most of the time they are calcium stones calcium oxalate calcium phosphate and map stones that is magnesium ammonium phosphate stones struvate stones what we call stagarn calculi uric acid stones cysteine stones so they are totally different so gall bladder stones are mainly cholesterol stones rarely pigmented stones sometimes mixed stones so have a uh, that clear cut idea in mind gall stones are different renal stones are totally different in their composition as such calcium can be seen to little extent uh, in the uh, gall stones also but predominantly calcium will be there in the renal stones so cholesterol stones are commonly seen in the uh, native americans especially 75% of the americans can suffer from this uh, population uh, they can have a cholesterol stones and pigment stones are very very rare as such in industrialized countries and in developing countries it's quite rare around 25% of the population can get affected and less than 40 years of age very rare incidence it's actually at after 40 after 40 and 50 peak incidence more than 80 years around 30% of the population can have a gall stones it's especially very common in the fatty white woman so 40 to 50 years of uh, age we call it has uh, you know five f of uh, the gall bladder stones fatty fertile fair female of 40 years so fatty in the sense in obesity obesity is itself is important risk factor for the gall bladder stones obese individuals will have hyper cholesterolemia status so that imposes the risk of development of the gall bladder stones and fertile in the sense 
uh, multi parous woman will have a more chance of development of the these gallstones probably there is a role of estrogens and uh, fair that means white population is more affected than the black population especially more common in females than in the males and 40 years 40 to 50 years of age that is common age where gallbladder stones are seen so remember this uh, fatty fertile fair female of 40 or 50 pigment stones either they could be black pigment or a brown pigment so you have to think about hemorrhagic uh, syndromes not only that person who has undergone a uh, ileal resection ileal bypass surgeries or ileal dysfunction syndromes they can also have a uh, pigment stones either it could be even due to the bacterial contamination of the biliary tree so that can also cause the pigment stone formation cholesterol stones very importantly they are uh, you know bile is get super saturated with the cholesterol they are the one which are very 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 common in the gallstone uh, gallstone chapter as such so this is cholesterol stones mainly it could be one of these uh, four phenomena this is a pathogenesis uh, in the cholelithiasis that you have to understand it could is it could be due to the super saturation of the bile so bile got super saturated i'll show in a diagrammatical representation later with the cholesterol bile is get super saturated with the cholesterol so hypercholesterolemia status are again important risk factor like obesity is important risk factor for the uh, bile to get the super saturated or it could be due to the gallbladder hypomotility gallbladder is not contracting properly so that resulting in the hypomotility of the gallbladder various hormonal factors and various factors can be there that could be a cause sometimes even drug induced so adverse effect of a drugs so so many things will cause hypomotility of the gallbladder so what will happen with the super saturation and the hypomotility the cholesterol will undergo nucleation so more and more uh, this multi lamellar aggregation of the cholesterol will take place so nucleation will take place around which the crystals will keep on developing then even mucus hypersecretion the uh, gallbladder will have this mucus secreting cells so they that can also <coughs> So that also can be important in a controversial factor that is mucus hypersecretion can be also uh, one of the important cause for the pathogenesis of the gallbladder stone. So what will happen as the dam advances is the trapping end of the more and more crystals agglomeration will take place as the dam advances. Have a look at this uh, diagram nicely quoted here. So missiles, the mixed missiles because of the, the excessive amount of the bile uh, uh, cholesterol as such biliary lipid so more and more uh, bile salts lecithin cholesterol will get aggregated so we call it as super saturation of the bile so there will be a nucleation will take place multi lamellar vesicles will be formed initially and along with that if there is a gallbladder hypomotility and cholesterol will get uh, nucleated more and more uh, multi lamellar vesicles will be formed and along with that the cholesterol monohydrates filaments all those things will get accreted so we call it as accretion so the contributory promoting factors are the mucus hypersecretion by the gallbladder gallbladder hypomotility and some amount of calcium also can get deposited in these cholesterol stones so this is how the cholelithiasis will take place classical case of a cholesterol stones is here so see the thickness of the gallbladder you know gallbladder is the organ of storage of a bile bile is the one which is secreted by the liver it comes to the gallbladder mainly to get concentrated so the bile will get around 10 per you know 10 times it gets concentrated in the uh, in the gallbladder as such so cholesterol stones can be seen anywhere in the especially they are seen in the body of the uh, gallbladder so this is cholesterol stone cut section appears like this more of a yellow in color but sometimes multiple gallbladder stone can be seen so rarely we will see the pigmented gallbladder stones so see the uh, cut section of this gallbladder the wall is totally thickened fibrotic so much fibrotic lumen is get got narrowed sometimes the gallstone can be seen here in the neck of the uh, gallbladder what we see microscopically is very peculiar and interesting points you know remember one point that gallbladder is not having submucosa there is an epithelium and then directly there is a muscle layer so epithelium and this area we call it a sub epithelial area shows a dense deposition of the dense deposition of the the lymphocytes and the plasma cells so that is chronic cholecystitis rarely the mucosa will dip into the muscle layer up to the muscle layer that kind of uh, things we call it as 
Ashaf Rokotansky sinus or Rokotansky Ashaf sinus. So, what is the importance of this is initially it can mimic for especially uh, for unexperienced pathologist. He may think that the uh, mucosecreting glands are there in the muscle and uh, it is adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder. So, it can mimic like a malignancy for that matter. So, but the gall, the glands will not show any features of anaplasia. So, this is a point you have to remember. It is a dipping of the mucosa into the muscle layer. So, that mimics like as if it is a adenocarcinoma. Uh, you feel as if it is infiltrating into the muscle layer. But no features of anaplasia will be there in these glands. So, that is the importance of the Rokotansky Ashaf sinus. If the more and more uh, foamy macrophages will get accumulated like this, so then we call it as cholesterolosis. Have a look at this diagram. So, usually what we see is the epithelium, the focal area of ulceration can be there in the epithelium. Dense deposition of the lymphocytes and plasma cells will be there in the chronic cholecystitis. So, chronic inflammatory cells should be there. Sometimes, so much uh, intense chronic inflammation that lymphoid follicles even with the germinal centers can be formed. So, that is chronic cholecystitis. So, inflammatory cells will be there in the subepithelial area. Don't use the word submucosa, there is no submucosa in the gallbladder. Gallbladder lining is again tall columnar cells like any other intestinal epithelium. So, there are even goblet cells to be there and dense deposition of the lymphocytes and the plasma cells. If at all, instead of lymphocytes and the plasma cells, there can be accumulation of more and more foamy macrophages like this. Then we call this particular condition as chole cholesterolosis. So, this they will ask in the MCQs, what is cholesterolosis? So, accumulation of dense foamy macrophages in the subepithelial area. So, that is cholesterolosis. Such a gallbladder on cut section is said to have peculiar strawberry appearance. So, strawberry gallbladder. So, the mucosa will appear more congested, more edematous. It appears the strawberry-like appearance. So, that is cholesterolosis. So, this is Rokitansky Ashaf sinus. That is where the mucosa can dip down into the muscle layer and it can mimic for the person who is seeing the slides as, as if he is seeing invasive adenocarcinoma. But remember there will be no features of anaplasia. So, it is a normal mucosa dipping into the deep into the muscle layer. So, then it is Rokitansky Ashaf sinus. So, this is a diagrammatical representation of the same. Sometimes there can be even rarely eosinophils. Sometimes there can be xanthogranulomatous inflammation or we call it as xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis when there is a granulomatous uh, reaction it is there accumulation of the macrophages in the form of the granulomas. So, xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. So, lymphoid aggregates can be also formed and lymphoid follicle can be formed with the uh, germinal centers. Rarely they, uh, they are plasma cells but predominantly they are lymphocytes. So, this is Rokitansky Ashaf sinus. So, this is very common sequelae of the cholesterol stones that is chronic cholecystitis will develop. So, remember chronic cholecystitis is very very common association with the cholelithiasis. So, if the stones are causing this inflammation we call it as chronic calculus cholecystitis. Chronic calculus cholecystitis. If there are no stones but still there is an inflammation of the gallbladder, then we call it as chronic calculus cholecystitis. So, the gallstones are the one which will irritate the mucosa and they cause the inflammatory reaction. Rarely, gallstones can even irritate so much that this particular epithelium, the lining epitheliums, the simple columnar epithelium can undergo hyperplastic change can attain the dysplastic change, so it can even turn into malignancy. Adenocarcinomas can develop, squamous cell carcinomas rarely will develop even with the gallstones. So, it is a very very rare thing that gallstones can even induce the carcinoma. But we have seen few cases that gallstones causing so much irritation to the gallbladder that even carcinoma can develop. So, remember chronic irritation elicits the chronic inflammation which will cause the malignancies. Rarely it can happen but it is well defined fact that chronic irritation can lead to the development of the malignancy. So what are the clinical features? Around 80% of these gallstones remain silent. 1 to 3% of the populations become symptomatic per year and they will have a peculiar signs, various signs and some symptoms. So, biliary colic is the one which is very painful condition. Pain classically migrates to the back between the shoulder blades or pain under the right shoulder. So, these are various signs are there in the surgery. You will read about it. 
the biliary colic is again said to be the one of the very severe pain the patient will experience. Along with that, patient can have nausea, vomiting, and even fever. Patient can also have a abdominal bloating and tolerance to the fatty food because fat, uh, fatty foods needs a bile for proper absorption. If the bile is not available uh, because of the obstruction by the stone, so intolerance to the fatty food will develop. Patient can have a steatorrhea, that is excessive amount of uh, fatty excretion in the stools. Belching can occur and even indigestion can occur. Remember the complications of the gallbladder stones. Empyema, that is inflammation and resulting in the formation of the pus. So, pus filled uh, gallbladder, so called as empyema of the gallbladder can occur. Rarely, the gallbladder can perforate and it can cause a chemical peritonitis. Fistulas can develop, cholangitis can develop. Inflammatory of the biliary tree can happen, that is cholangitis. Most important is the obstructive cholestasis. So, patient will have obstructive jaundice. Rarely, even pancreatitis can uh, ha happen because of the again the stones obstructing the flow of the pancreatic secretions. Obstruction and un in uninflamed gall stones can even result in the uh, formation of the mucosal of uh, gallbladder or what we call it as hydrops of the gallbladder. So, mucosa will have uh, this mucus secreting cells. So, plenty of mucus uh, can be get accumulated within the gallbladder. Rarely we will see these conditions so called as mucosal of a gallbladder or hydrops of a gallbladder. So, it is all uh, construction will show plenty of mucus is get secreted in the gallbladder. So, this is mucosal of a gallbladder or a hydrops of a gallbladder. So, gallstones are obstructing. So, they can cause obstruction at various sites. So, they can obstruct at the neck of a gallbladder which is the narrow passage. Uh, where the bile will go, so the car stones can obstruct here, or they can obstruct the common bile duct, or they can cause obstruction to the even pancreatic secretions, or they can even obstruct at here at the terminal end of this biliary tree. So they can cause obstructive joints by doing the obstruction at the various sites. Rarely carcinomas will develop. So this is animated uh, diagram to just to show that obstructive joint is most important cause is the the car stones. So, they can obstruct the biliary tree, the common bile duct or they can also cause the obstruction to the pancreatic secretions or they can even cause the obstruction at here at the opening near the ampoule of waiter. So, the gallstones are known for these complications, obstructive joints. So, that is about interesting story of the gallstones, cholelithiasis. Thank you.